Just a second. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> We're all well, late. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm the host and I'm late. I had trouble I had trouble signing in. Me too. Okay. Well, we're glad you're here. There's Vincent on his phone. Morning. A apparently, I had to remember my Zoom password from 2014. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't think Zoom existed. <laughs> Jeffrey, you might want to send an email out to people who have tried to get on at 8.45 just to say try again. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Let me see if I can do that without losing you all. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. <laughs> if you can't, I could reply to all on one of your messages, I think. Oh. If not, maybe, maybe you did it blind carbon. Well, I did. Here, let me try. That's a very good idea. I had a lot of trouble logging in. Okay, so it wasn't just the host. I feel a little better about that. Yeah, I just, had no trouble logging in. Yeah, I, I, I didn't either, but take your time, Jeffrey. You got any place else to go? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sam. Hey, Sam, why don't, Sam, why don't you just continue with the jokes while I play with this? <laughs> oh, man. I, I got a million of them, but they're in my car, unfortunately. Um, well, I, didn't, I, I didn't have trouble signing into some other Zoom meetings recently, but this one, for some reason, I did. It may have been because the host wasn't on. Yeah, it was waiting for the host to begin, right. but that was... Yeah, that, that's not a your problem. That was okay. Yeah, but you guys all got on. No, I just got on no. now. Oh, okay. So, uh, hmm. you know, I'm having trouble getting to my email because... Um, I'm, I'm on it, Jeffrey. <laughs> uh, it takes a village. <laughs> uh, I asked for this meeting to be recorded, and because it's being recorded, I cannot minimize anything else on my screen. It's okay. I've got it. JS, how do you have access to my email? That'd be awesome, too. But in <laughs> I'm, I'm taking one of the spiritual enrichment updates that you send. Yeah. And I'm applying all. But there, it's a blind copy, so I'm not sure you have the emails. But anyway, I, I cannot figure how to proceed any other way but to proceed. Yeah, Why don't we just do that? Okay. Uh -oh, now, wait a second. I just so, lost you guys. Hang on just a second. Oh, wow. So, something happened. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Okay. I'm not... This isn't one of my strengths. You guys go ahead. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. Um, sorry for the delay there. I think I'll, uh, we'll, we'll get better as we go along and learn it, right? Of course. Good. So who is with us? I can't see everybody at the same time. There's Paul. Hi, Paul. Eleanor, hello. Good morning. Vince is with us. Andrea, Jay, and Sam. Okay. Chuck. Do you see people in the vertical row on the right side of your screen? Right, yeah. that's, a, that's a thumbnail. You see more people there. Right. Paul Van Zuden. Paul Van Zuden is with us. Greetings. Eleanor Prince. Yeah. If you get to the bottom, then you push the up arrow. One thing I found helpful with Zoom is if you can mute when you're not talking, that way any background sounds in your room will not be picked up because it'll Zoom will think you're trying to talk if the dog barks in the back. Right. So um, that's a piece of advice I have about Zoom. Um, okay, well, let's start. Um, did, I don't know if folks, ha everybody had a chance to look at Sam's some spiritual journey, but um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to have cross paths with Sam again and to hear the details. Mm -hmm. He's no longer at WCC. Now I know. And it's because you've been paying attention to the spirit. 
and she might take us all kinds of places that we never thought we'd go before. And uh, so it was a, it was great to interview you, Sam. And um, in terms of our timing today, by the way, I only have a 40 minute free Zoom account. I have not upgraded until I see what the church is going to do about that. So our 40 minutes started when I logged in about five minutes ago. Let's call it nine o'clock. So I think we have till 940 if we want to take it that long. That should be more than enough time. I think so. Maybe 935 so we don't uh, get cut off precipitously. So um, there's a lot of things I could say about Sam's journey, but I already had my chance. So how about the rest of you? What, uh, how would you like to respond to Sam's uh, story? Or maybe give Sam the first chance to say a word. How was the experience, Sam, uh, sharing your spiritual story with me? Uh, well, it was great. I mean, uh, you're, a, you're a very capable interviewer and, um, and, and, and Valdek was, uh, did his greatest impression of Cecil B. DeMille that I've ever seen because uh, he directed us capably. And I think the end product uh, was as good as it could have been uh, given uh, the, the content which, for which I <laughs> claim full responsibility. But, um, uh, it, you know, I, I would say this, that it's a, it's a lot like um, preparing for anything that, that, that I do professionally. It's like the preparation is really the work, and then the actual event is really just a lot of fun. Uh, and, so the, and so it was with this. And, you know, um, you know, I had all these notes, and you saw, you know, I kept dropping them on the floor if you saw the video, um, uh, which was probably where they needed to be, you know, somewhere other than in my field of view. But I, I, what I would encourage people to do is if, if they've seen the video and have a, you know, a question or, or, or maybe even uh, better than a question would be, uh, well, this reminds me of something in my, you know, personal spiritual journey. Uh, I personally would like to hear that, but of course I'll answer any, qu any questions that you have or respond to anything that uh, you think is relevant. So. Yeah, I think a great value in this, as I said in the video a couple times, is, gee, if that's Sam's journey, what's my journey been like? What have been the twists and turns? What remains finished? In fact, Sam, you and I didn't have a chance to really talk about your future. None of us know the future. Um, however, it, uh, we could also discuss that. How about others? Uh, would others like to chime in and give your uh, uh, responses to Sam's stories or questions? Uh, yeah, this is Paul. I thought it was fantastic, and uh, thanks so much, Sam. It was really, really wonderful to uh, to hear your journey. I do have a question. Um, as I understand it, the journey that you had was essentially trying to find what works for you in discerning what God wants from us. Right. But I don't get the sense that you ever doubted the existence of God. Is that fair? Uh, that is fair. Um, <clears throat> so I, I'll say it, uh, you know, kind of a slightly different way. It was always a given. Um, uh, you know, it, it would be, you know, goofy in the extreme to engage in a dialogue with someone who isn't there. Um, and, uh, you know, and again, I, you know, I, all I can do is offer testimony. I can't offer proof. Um, it's up to you who are listening to decide that. But um, but no, I, I never really did. I, you know, one of the, one of the questions in the bullets that you, uh, Paul provided me was, you know, was, was there ever a time when you, you know, kind of turned away or, or weren't participating and that could be, uh, you know, mistaken for or confused with, you know, some belief or lack of belief that is. And the answer to that is, yeah, sure. Uh, there, there was a time, uh, you know, a rather long lengthy period of time during which I really, you know, was not in you know, communication or communion or you know whatever you'd you'd, you'd like to say, um, uh, you know, and it's a little bit like this. You know, there's some people you hear from when they're not doing well, and the way you can tell that they're doing great is you don't hear from them. Uh, and and I think that there was a little bit of that. It's like oh, I was doing fine. I was you know going to school. I was you know building a career, building a family, and so forth. 
and you know it and, and it was not always but occasionally when you know you hit a barrier or a bump in the road or there was something that you know didn't add up or make sense that you you know you would say hmm uh you know maybe i should i should check in with uh, see if god has something to to, to say and again it, it it isn't so much a uh you know you know where's you know where's my phone what what's god's number let me call him up um it, it, it it's really a little you know less uh, fancy than that it's you know you you just sort of listen and that was kind of you know how i uh, how i perceived it um and then the other thing that i did is uh, uh there there was something i actually left out of uh, of my narrative and this is a good place to plug it in um so there was a point where you know i was thinking uh, you know, well, what's right here? What, you know, what do I, you know, how do I, how do I go about this? Where, where do I get come some kind of response? And um, I actually, I called a phone number. So I, I had gotten a pamphlet and, you, you know, please don't hang up on me. It was a Jews for Jesus pamphlet. Now that was, you know, very controversial in its day. I think they're probably still around. I'm not sure. Uh, and I got hold of a, of a human, you know, talk to a guy on the phone. And what he said to me was, was really very simple. You know, he didn't, he didn't throw his arms around me and say, Oh, you know, we've been waiting for you for thousands of years and thank you for coming. Uh, he was very blunt. And he said, you sure you want to do this? This is not easy. And, uh, you know, for that, you know, I'm eternally grateful. And uh, I remember his name, his name was Tuvia Zaretsky. And I think he was located in Skokie of all places. And what he did, he said, read, read the Acts of the Apostles. Just read the Acts of the Apostles. They'll, you know, those words will tell it to you better than anyone I know can, better than I can. Just do that. Uh, and, you know, that the rest is history. That, that was really the, you know, kind of the, the, the missing piece. But that interaction and that formula was occurred during a period of time when I was out of touch, out of communication. And it was right, obviously, at the end of that, because once I did that, then I was back, back in communication. You know, if you're saying something like, how could God do something like this, right? You know, which is a question that people could probably ask right now. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, the, the Jeffrey's the theologian here, and I'll let him answer, you know, theologically, you know, that, uh, you know that there there is a response to that but i think the you know for me the, the the always the answer for that has been um you know god gave us reason <laughs> some more than others i guess you could say but god gave us the gift of reason rational ability um and the way we have used the that reason the choices that we have made have dictated the way history has unfolded um, and I, that's a macro kind of answer. The micro answer is just as reliable. And that is, you know, you look at your own life, you know, what are the choices you've made? And, um, you know, I was never someone, and I'm frankly still not quite one of those people who prays before large decisions have to get made, right? You know, you hear about people who say, well, you know, before we, you know, bought our house in, you know, wherever we prayed about it never been anybody quite like that there are, it's possible to do that clearly um but that's uh, that that hasn't been something that i've been terribly comfortable doing nevertheless um these are all the product of choices so you know you know, you, you you can unfold it that way i'm, for, I'm sorry i forgot the question it's uh, <laughs> all right <laughs> your answer worked Okay. <laughs> Somebody else have a response to Sam's story or a question for him? This is J.S. Hedegaard, and thank you for stepping forward to give your story. Um, stories always fascinate me um, because they come from an authentic part of us that even if I don't understand the whys of what you did, I understand the journey and how, 
how necessary it was for you to follow it. Mm. Um, not in ways that one can express, you just relate to it in a very authentic, deep, wordless kind of way. So thank you for that. Sure. Um, I guess one of the things that I thought was, I wanted to ask, I feel my own personal journey is something of a spiral mm. where I go around the spiral and then I come to a place that feels familiar that I was there before, but I'm looking at it from a different level right. because of the journey totality up until that point is different from the last time I was at here at that spot on the spiral. Would you characterize your journey that way or is there some other pattern or pattern less aspect to it? Hmm. That's a great, that's a really a great question obviously you you know you, you use a side of the brain that i neglect completely because you 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 can see sort of in in multiple dimensions uh, uh you know a path that uh, you know could be described in any number of ways um i i, I would i i would call it a uh, you know so a spiral is is sort of three-dimensional um I'll call mine sort of an elliptical orbit, if you can, you know, kind of sustain that astronomical image. But the thing that's funny about an astronomical orbit is that, and again, I'm going to get a little technical um, uh, uh, for just a second, and that is, you know, you, you're going around, uh, you know, a, a heavenly body here, right? The sun in this case, or God, if you want to sort of extend the image a bit. But it's only obviously elliptical and a closed orbit from where I stand and view it. If you're looking at it from a kind of a galactic perspective, it's actually something like a spiral, but it's quite elongated and spread out because as you orbit the sun, the sun itself is orbiting the center of the galaxy and the galaxy itself is moving somewhere in the universe. So from the point of view of, of some, you know, detached observer at a much li larger remove, it'll look really squiggly. Um, and, uh, you know, as long as it makes sense to you, um, you know, it will work. And, you know, that larger intelligence might look at it and say, geez, what the heck is that guy doing? Um, but, you know, all you can do is sort of, you know, uh, you know, react to the, you know, the milestones, the markers, the path that you discern and, uh, you know, hope and pray that it makes sense. May I ask something? Sure. Um, having recently lost Bill's stepdad, uh, I'm curious as to what your view of the afterlife is. Wow. Why don't you ask me an easier question? Cause uh, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, it's just your opinion I'm interested in. Sure. Okay. Well, I, I guess my opinion is rather uh, is rather orthodox, and I think that um, it uh, well orthodox with a twist. Okay. So um, I don't necessarily believe that you know that we're sent back to redo things. You know, like a like a karmic economy. Um, uh, but uh, I, I sort of remember the movie with Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep, uh, uh, Judging Your Life or something like that. And, uh, you know, there it was, you know, you, you had to keep going back until you got it right. Um, I think except for that part, it's, it's a little like that. You get to, you know, you, you get to go in, in, into some, you know, sort of plane of existence that, uh, uh, you know, you know, where you can. Uh, you know, meet the people that you've always wanted to meet, where you can, uh, you, you can relive what you've done, you can, you know, dial it up and say, gee, why did I do that? Or gee, that was actually not so bad. Um, uh, but I'll, I, but it's sprinkled in with that is, is I also think that, you know, the, you know, there's a Catholic view, you know, the sort of the Orthodox view is that, 
uh, that at some point you, you know, the, the, there's, the, there's the, you know, the, there's the general judgment and there's the particular judgment. The particular judgment is your life is evaluated in an instant and you are sent in one of two directions. The, uh, and, and typically, you know, the, the direction you don't want to go is the direction of separation from God. I would say that that's essentially dictated by everything that we've done in life. And if what we've done in life has separated ourselves from God, that choice is honored. And uh, after, after we depart in, in, the, in, in some other plane of existence, we're, we're granted. Our choice is honored and we're separated from God. If not, then we're allowed admission, if you will, into uh, you know, the glorious presence of God, whatever that winds up looking like. And again, the, you know, the, the um, you know, the Catholic view on that, you know, it's purgatory. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, pur I don't think I want to do purgatory. Um, and the, the way I think that that makes any sense at all is, you know, if, if you're going to go and meet an important person, I, I used to use in this formulation, you know, the president of the United States, given that that's now more of a of a, a setup for a bad joke, uh, I'll omit that. But if you were going to meet the Queen of England, let's try that. That's pretty unremarkable. She's a tough lady. Um, uh, you know, you might put on a clean set of clothes. You might take a shower. You might shave. You know, use deodorant, maybe a little bit of cologne. You know, put on that 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 nice suit that you you know was hanging in your closet, and you hope you can still fit into it. So, in other words, you would get prepared in some way. And I think that the, that the, the the experience of purgatory is a preparation. Uh, you know, you get to plane off the rough edges because the holy is quite powerful. Um, and so I think my view on that is that you know you you get to prepare. And you know, there's no clock in heaven. It probably you know takes a thousandth of a second and you're done. And then you know eternity rolls on in a way that none of us can really understand. So um, that's a uh, kind of a complex answer to a really terrific and simple question. Uh, Sam, this is uh, Gene and Chuck. Uh, yeah. we, really, we enjoyed your presentation, your humor, and your specificity of the pathway that you took. We were wondering, um, how did each or some of your various church moves affect uh, how you're living your life now? Uh, Okay, that's that's a that's a powerful question, and I, you know, I, I guess you'd almost have to ask other people that question because, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know that it, that it's changed all that much. Um, but I'll say it this way: I have less tolerance. Yeah, let's say it that way. I have a much lower tolerance for um, self-absorption. Um, that the, uh, and if you want to experience people being self-absorbed, all you have to do is get behind the wheel of your car and you can see it, you know, very plainly. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's like, it's a four-way stop, dude. You're supposed to stop, right? You know, and so that's me recognizing someone else's self-absorption inside of my own self-absorption. Um, and, and so I, I, you know, I, I do try to uh, you know, minimize that. But that I, I think I have less tolerance for people being something other than gracious to one another. Um, and, uh, you know, I, used, I think I'd, I'd say it this way, I used to be a, a lot more, uh, you know, kind of tone deaf to that. Um, that's probably the one thing I'm aware of. In in the uh, bottom of your screen, when you put your cursor down there, there's a, uh, a pop-up menu, and you can actually raise your hand to speak. And Eleanor Prince has figured all that out and has something to say. Wow. Okay. And then you have to unmute your microphone before you say anything. Yeah, see, what happens is when someone raises their hand, it, it mutes. Uh, what you can do is yeah. press your space bar, uh, press your space bar, and, and that will unmute you, I believe. Right, and Eleanor, you can also just take your cursor and put it down in the pop-up menu 
will come up and then go to the far left and you can unmute yourself. Or as Sam was saying, you can go to the uh, uh, pop-up menu where you raise your hand and I think you can put your hand down <laughs> and that should also unmute you. Is that right, Sam? Sounds good. Still can't hear you, Eleanor. You need to unmute yourself. There. Oh, you did it for a second. Whatever you did, do that again. There you go. Talk, Eleanor. Go. I can't hear any. I can't hear anything. Good. Sorry. Sorry, Eleanor. You're unmuted, but oh, maybe I can. Maybe I'm the one who needs to put your hand down. This is the first time I've ever hosted a meeting and it's very imperfect. One other option, Eleanor, if we can't get the audio, is on that pop-up menu along the bottom of the screen, just to the right of center is a chat option. Right. If you click on that, then you can write your question or comment in the chat box. I was just voting thumbs up on that. Eleanor, I just, I think I just unmuted you. Try it again. Try it again. Yeah, I'm 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 looking at the participants button, and uh, it looks that Eleanor's microphone is muted. Her hand is up. Maybe I her microphone isn't on. Yeah, or if she puts her if she puts her cursor on her picture, and she's muted, you can you'll see an unmute little icon at the top of her right picture. Well, I Eleanor, I, I think see, she should write her question. I see your I see your face. Um, you know, another thing, Eleanor, there's a chat box at the bottom. I think you could go to the chat box and type your comment or question. Can, can you put your cursor on the bottom and then the pop-up menu will occur, uh, will pop up and then go to chat, click on chat and you should be able to comment. This is very frustrating. I think this is what purgatory must be like. <laughs> Jeffrey, this Chuck, can I ask a technical question? Why, who shared their screen that says, if nothing prompts from your browser, download your mind? Someone has shared their screen. Was that you, Jeffrey? Um, if it's me, I don't know that I did that or what it means or how to not do it. <laughs> Press share screen and unshare, maybe. There we, oh. go. There we go. Now, now, Jeffrey, maybe you could instruct Eleanor visually on what to do or something. Well, Eleanor's microphone is muted. You can see that, right? You can see that icon there. Yep. So, so Jeffrey, oh, bingo. Eleanor, go. Eleanor, oh, wait. You just unmuted for a second. Press your space bar, Eleanor, and talk. Okay, your microphone is not on. Can't hear you. <laughs> how, how close do you live to the doubtings? Can you get in your car and drive over? <laughs> that's, that's now officially illegal. Oh, come on. This is, this is essential. <laughs> you know, I, I find it interesting that liquor stores are essential, but churches are not. But that's just me. And, th and this, this, and this confuses you how? <laughs> <laughs> uh, while, we're, while we're waiting for Eleanor, maybe I could... Uh, yeah, write, go, write. go ahead, Paul. Uh, Sam, when we met a few weeks ago, as I recall, you said one of the things about the Catholic Church that um, I guess was more meaningful to you um, was the... Uh, uh, the Eucharist, yeah. In that, you know, if I recall, you thought the Protestant approach was kind of 
seeing it as more symbolic and oh that's nice and everything but that right. the catholic church really to use the word embodied the eucharist can you speak to that a little bit i, I can and, and it's lovely that you remembered that so one of the things that um you know i i created a little bit of a reading list uh for for you guys and and one of them if you want to read it it it's in the uh, and I'll exp I will answer your question, but I just want to give you the site. So it's in it's in the Gospel of John, chapter six, and it's verses roughly forty six through sixty eight. Uh, John six forty six through sixty eight. So um, the uh, and and it's really kind of lodged there, but I I, I discovered it kind of post hoc. In other words, after. Uh, you know, being schooled and taught that the, you know, the Eucharist is the true presence of God. Um, uh, you know, we went back and, and, and saw this. And it, it works a lot better in the Greek, but essentially what Jesus was saying at the Last Supper to his disciples was, you know, look, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, gone in a corporeal way, but I'll be with you in a, in a slightly different way. And the Holy Spirit will follow. But what you need to do is you really need to, you know, eat my flesh and drink my blood because then you'll be in, I'll be incorporated into you in a very present way. And um, if that were symbolic, if that were merely symbolic, then the, this is a reductio ad absurdum because some of what goes on in John's gospel is along the lines of there were many who, upon hearing this, departed and said, we can't deal with this. We cannot put up with this. Because as, uh, as uh, observant Jews, there was a very strict prohibition to consuming blood in a slaughtered animal. Uh, blood belongs to God, and it, it, that is a metaphor for life. And so if these people who were hearing this from Jesus, they were hearing it from Jesus. They weren't hearing it from someone else or you know, you know, in a sermon or something like that. It was Jesus himself who was speaking the word saying, if you want to participate and have me be part of you, what you have to do is eat my, eat my uh, flesh and drink my blood, which is offered in the form of a communion and uh, in the Eucharist. And um, if, 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 if those people had believed it was meant only symbolically, they would have said, yeah, that's a nice image. It's not really anything that excites us, but rather they thought it was literal. And they said, well, we just can't, that's crazy. We can't do that. So um, it's, it is a, uh, a, a way of, I think it was Jesus's statement that I can sustain you uh, to the extent that you incorporate me into your physical being, you know, your physical creatures. Yeah, and one of the great miracles of the incarnation is that Jesus took on, God took on the vestments of humanity, truly, not as a, uh, an experiment or not as, a, as anything other than a true experience, took on human form while retaining divine nature. And in that, um, you know, gave us the opportunity to incorporate Jesus into our being. Now, you can look around and now and say, well, all right, that's on, that's temporarily suspended because we can't have that. Whereas those who might, you know, regard it as a little more symbolic, you know, have somewhat different access to it. And be that as it may, um, I, that is something that I think people have fought over. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, schisms have developed based on that. Um, you know, for what it's worth, I think Luther actually believed in the true presence. And over time, um, in the Protestant tradition, but notably in, in the Lutheran tradition, that got watered down really only in about the last century or so. And, uh, you know, the, the fancy word transubstantiation, which means something has changed its nature, uh, turned into consubstantiation. Again, another fancy word, but that really means something slightly different. Um, but the but, but to answer your question, Paul, you know that is a I'll call that a direct and 
you know, physical manifestation of God's presence with us that for me, I think is, uh, makes Catholicism uh, and I guess the Eastern traditions and those that still hold that distinct uh, from other from other religious traditions. I mean, it doesn't mean we're right necessarily, but there, um, you know, I, 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 I think it is. And, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I, I've lived that way for, you know, 10 years. So. Um, I would like to jump in because I don't want us to be cut off unceremoniously. I want to thank everybody for participating today. Uh, uh, the worship service is supposed to be available at 10 o'clock today. I haven't seen an email yet, but um, look for that so you can view the worship service. And Wednesday, we will have our last WCC reads together. Chuck, I may need your help again to set up that meeting because you have, you're not limited to 40 minutes. At this point, I'm limited to 40 minutes on my Zoom account. And obviously, I'm still learning how to host a meeting. I also want to say hello to Mel. Mel, can you hear my voice? You, I'm um, sorry, we can't hear you though. You're not muted. But, you are muted. Uh, oh, on my screen it shows you're not muted. Mel, are you there? Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, we can't hear you though. But I wanted to uh, give you thanks and praise, Mel, because this was your idea. Back when Paul and I met with you at your house in, I think, June of 2019, you were very keen on making sure that we have several sessions, spiritual journeys in this program year. So I, I really, really want to thank you for doing it because they've been very fruitful and very compelling. Um, anybody else have a real quick last word? Thank you, Sam, not only for coming over to the church on Tuesday and doing the recording, but being available this morning. Everybody should have an email from the church regarding um, links to the service. I just got mine. Okay, good. Thanks, JS. Yeah, Chuck, you were saying something? Could you ask Mel to wave to us if he can't speak? Yeah. Mel, can you wave to us? Yes. Nice. Nicely Very done. Um, and Elder, and Elder wave. <laughs> Um, Eleanor, I sent you, if you look on your chat line, I sent you my phone number. If you want to call me, you can call me, okay? All right, thank you. You're very kind in every way. And uh, we, we are so glad to have gotten reacquainted in this very deep way, not just on the surface, but about things that really matter and last. So be well, everybody. Thank you. Uh, watch your emails for more spiritual enrichment information. Okay. And be safe, be well, and know that the Spirit is with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Nice to see you all. Nice to see you. Thanks. <clears throat>